guys and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Greg and this is the Starting Eleven show. Of course, our first of the season. That's a new season and new optimism. The stakes are a little less high than uh, the end of last season, which, which doesn't feel long ago when we were trying to work out which 11 players could potentially uh, go out there, get us three points and then clinch survival. But the stakes are still high here. We're trying to work out which team could go to get us off to a good start. Fulham at Goodison feels like a good opportunity to, to get off to a running start. They've obviously had a troubled summer. Uh, temptations from the Middle East when it comes to Mitrovic and their manager. But they have um, they have bolstered their squad well with Bassi and Jimenez and, and a few other signings. Uh, you just wonder, will they have the same success as they had last season? I don't think anyone seems to, to back them for that. And, and it feels like this could be an opportunity to draw blood and get the season off to a good start. Just kill the narratives from the end of the last season. We're on an unbeaten pre-season run. So keep that momentum going, you know. Keep, keep the mood high in the camp, I think, is important. But um, obviously difficult when, you, you, when you're constructing a, an 11 for the, for the first time of a season. Um, what we can go off is is what we had at the end of the last season, but Sean Dyche was talking in a lot of temporary language at the end of last season. You know, players playing out of position, everyone mucking in and 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 putting in a shift on parts of the pitch they might not be used to. You know, the prime example is is Decore playing as uh, that second striker role, which Decore has come out and said recently. I did it for Dyche for one season. I'm hoping not to to have to do it again. Um, so you'd like to think there will be slight changes. You know, Garner was playing everywhere last season. Godfrey was playing all across the back line. Um, and you can also look at what we've done in pre-season. I think the sporting lineup we had will probably play quite a big part in this in this estimation. Another thing that makes it difficult is we've left the transfer dealings um, quite late. Again, you're looking at a skeleton of a squad here and you'd expect maybe two, three, four more signings to come in. I say that, uh, watch the window close now, we bring no one else in, Chimiti deal falls through, which hasn't happened yet at the time of recording. Um, uh, yeah, and you've also got a few players who are shaking off injuries from either the end of last season or even uh, that they might have got in pre-season like Dwight McNeil. In terms of the news for this game specifically, we know Tarkovsky's fit, our new vice-captain. Um, we've got a late decision on Calvert-Lewin uh, to be made. It seems in the language that it's more about match fitness and getting minutes in him than, than practical fitness. We know he's on this new plan, uh, this new fitness plan that's taken him to Germany. And um, and Sean Dyche is very much about not recreating the mistakes of the past and throwing him in. But he got 45 against Sporting where he started. Um, and we've got mixed messages from him and from Calvert-Lewin himself where Calvert-Lewin's comments seem to suggest he'll start 45 and Dyche's make it sound more like he'll have the second half. Um, so, so we'll work that out when we come to it but uh, along with that Dwight McNeil a uh, huge loss for us but um, it's looking like weeks not days with his injury so you know we won't see him no Deli Ali, no Seamus Coleman and Dan Juma is having missed the sporting game is back training I don't know if that means he's fit to play uh, Sean Dyche is and, and I like him for it very coy when it comes to talking about team news he's very straight faced he doesn't give anything away same with the transfer stuff you know oh, yeah I've heard of Willie Nyonto he, um, he's a good player uh, you know he's, he's very straight faced I think so looking at the team through that I'm going to pretty much go with the spine of what that sporting team was and, and sort of talk position by position Pickford of course starts in goal with no Coleman it has to be Patterson out on one side and the big question is who is next to Tarkovsky in the uh, in the centre back position? Uh, three candidates, of course. Now Mina's gone. It's it's either Godfrey who started against Sporting. It's Branthwaite off the back of a good loan and a good under 21s uh, Euros tournament, uh, or it's Michael Keane who was favoured with Tarkovsky for parts of last season. Now the narrative feels like to me it, it's it's Michael Keane was being phased out at the end of last season for Yerry Mina. Branthwaite will become a big part of our squad this season, but I think that's going to be a phased approach. And Godfrey starting against Sporting makes me think that he will probably get the call up here. So Tarkovsky and Godfrey would be my assumption. Uh, then left back, we've seen Mikalenko climbing back to full fitness during the preseason. Uh, for me, I think it's it's young. Deitch's priority here is to just have a solid foundation, I think. Um, the experience of Young makes up for Coleman being phased out of the team this season, I think. 
Young we will see a lot more of him this season than Villa saw of him last season, I think. Um, he'll certainly get some minutes and, and around the pitch as well, I think. So that's my back line. Midfield, again, I can see it being very similar to Sporting. Uh, you, you, you'd ideally have... Well, it, it all depends here on on whether you think Dan Juma plays or not. I, I personally think he will be used sparingly in this one. Uh, I think that's a, that's a phasing in thing. I don't think Deitch will make the mistakes of his predecessor and force players on before they have to. And that's going to conflict with something I'll say later. So um, so we'll come back to that. But I, I think because Garner is going to be utilised elsewhere, I think we'll see Gay and Anana again, uh, which is a solid base for midfield. And, and for now, because I think either Dan Juma will play there going forward or we get Nonto in and he plays there or Deli Ali eventually recovers. Um, I think Decore will still be playing in that sort of number 10 or second striker role. So I think he's the more advanced of a, of a three-man midfield. Awobi on the left. James Garner is a right midfielder, which I don't love. But, but those two will give a lot when it comes to tracking back. And Patterson and Young are both quite um, competent, overlapping uh, fullbacks. I, I say that now. I'm not sure how much I believe it, but um, I think that's what we ha what we do with what we have. I think Dan Juma's inclusion would change things around a bit, and I think the the signing of another person for that number ten role changes that a lot. And then up front, it's it's the the question, isn't it? Does um, if Dan Juma's fit, does he play there? Uh, does Neil Maupai play there, or does Calvert Lewin's forty five minutes come at the beginning of the game? I, and I think he will get forty five minutes. Uh, and I think it's 45 minutes. It might be all we need to, to get our nose ahead. And the way Deitch played last season, it seemed to be whistleblows, blitzkrieg, get a goal, hang on. Uh, so I think calvert -Lewin starts. I think we go for an early goal. Uh, and then I think we just soak up what Fulham have for the rest of the game and hope Mitrovic isn't playing. Um, so I think that's my team. And, and thinking about it now, it might even be identical to what started against Sporting. So, so maybe not the most insightful video. But um, that's my that's my prediction, uh, and it all hinges on on Dan Juma being being fit and ready. And the reason I've gone no Dan Juma, but yes to Calvert Lewin, is because I think one is more about physical fitness, and the other is about match fitness. Uh, and Calvert Lewin's only going to get match fitness by playing playing the games, uh, and this feels like a good game for him to play. And and he started against Sporting, so why wouldn't he start this game? That, that's my thinking. Uh, Pickford and goal, Patterson, Godfrey, Tarkovsky and Young, uh, Anana and Gay, Decore as that more advanced midfielder, then Awobi on the left side, Garner on the right side and Calvert-Lewin up front. Tell me um, tell me I'm wrong, please do, um, in the comments, put your team in there, what do you want to see? Uh, obviously all of us want to see Branthwaite in that setup uh, sooner rather than later. Um, is that how you'd have the midfield? Would you be utilising Dan Juma? What do you think about Dobbin? Did he have a good enough preseason that he should be challenging for either that second striker or one of those wide roles? Perhaps he plays where Garner's playing, freeing up Garner for the midfield. Would you risk Cabot Lewin? Uh, would you start Maupai? Um, does Gray still have a, a role to play whilst he's uh, whilst he's not yet gone, even though he might be um, transferring soon? And uh, how many more players do you think we need to bring in? Looking at the squad I've given you, what needs to be strengthened? Let me know all of that. And we'll see you next week where hopefully we are three points up. Cheers, guys.